Amen. <clears throat> We're continuing our study of the book of 1 Corinthians. And in our study of the book of 1 Corinthians, this remarkable, remarkable book, we've come to chapter 13, the great love chapter. In verses 4 through 7 of chapter 13, God gives us a list of 15 characteristics of love. And we're presently working our way through those 15 characteristics. The first characteristic God chose to place on his list of 15 characteristics was the virtue of patience. To be patient is to be long-suffering. To be patient is to be willing to put up with a lot of grief and pain for a long period of time. We looked at this characteristic uh, last week. This morning, we're going to look at the second characteristic God placed on this list, and that characteristic is the characteristic of kindness. Love, God tells us, is kind. The English word kind is a translation of a Greek word that means seeking to be useful. Seeking to be useful. Kindness speaks of seeking to be useful. A genuinely kind person looks for opportunities to be useful and helpful. The genuinely kind person wants to do more than just respond to a need he might come across. Now, the average person will often respond to a need when confronted with it, but doesn't really look for those in need. The genuinely kind person, however, is different. The genuinely kind person is always on the lookout for people who might need help. The genuinely kind person wants to make certain that the needy men and women who cross his or her path are cared for. And as you can imagine, kindness to others pleases God. He likes it. <laughs> and because kindness to others pleases God, God expects us to be kind. Being kind to others, in fact, is commanded by God. Colossians 3, 12, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Clothe yourselves with kindness. Clothe yourselves with a genuine effort to help others. And when you do this, you're doing what God does. You're doing what he does. Being kind to others imitates God. It imitates what he does. Jesus put it this way in Luke chapter 6. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. He is, unkind, he is kind to ungrateful and and evil men. Being kind to others imitates God because God is kind to others, even to the ungrateful and the evil. And not only that, being kind to others honors God. Proverbs 14. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to the needy honors God. When we are kind to the poor and needy by giving them the help they need, the scriptures tell us that we are lending to God. Really. <laughs> Being kind to others, we're told, is lending to God. Proverbs 19. He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. I remember when I first came across that, I thought, that's a very strange idea, lending to God, like God needs me to lend to him. But think of it this way. God wants to help a poor man by giving him some money. Now, God could, of course, rain down money from heaven on top of that poor man and have all he would need. Of course, I would like to see that. That would be a marvelous thing to see. But he doesn't. He doesn't rain down money from heaven. Instead, 
he borrows the money the poor man needs from a kind Christian. Then he sends that kind Christian to the poor man to give him the money he borrowed from that kind Christian. This means that when we obey God's command to help a person in need, God considers the money we give to the needy person a loan to God. That's kind of staggering, really. A loan to God. And incidentally, God tells us that he will reward, or if you will, repay the loan. He who is kind to the poor lends to God, and he will reward him for what he has done. Being kind to others is lending to God, and that's an honor. It's also important to note that God, is especially, God especially wants us to be kind to fellow believers. Galatians 6, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Being kind to fellow believers is being kind to to God himself. He declares that to be so. Being kind to fellow believers is being kind to God. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 25. For I, Jesus, was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger invite you in, or need any clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Whatever you did for one of these brothers of mine, you did for me. When you are kind to my brothers and sisters, Jesus said, you are being kind to me. Being kind to fellow believers is being kind to God himself. Now most of us are very much aware of God's many blessings to us. We are very much aware that God has poured out on us blessings we don't deserve. And even though we may not appreciate all God's blessings as much as we should, we all know that God has blessed us enormously. Especially when we see how rich we are when compared to the extreme poverty in most of the world. Because of these great blessings, we Christians often thank God for being good to us. We may not thank him as much as we should or as intently as we should, but most Christians I know genuinely thank God for being good to them. We pray, oh Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for your many blessings. You have been so good to me. Lord, how can I thank you for your many blessings to me? That's a prayer I'm sure that's on the lips of many believers. God's answer is this, I'll tell you how to thank me, be kind to the needy, especially fellow believers. That's what Jesus was getting at in Matthew 25, where he said that when we are kind to his brothers, we're being kind to him. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. If I was hungry, Jesus asked, would you feed me? Of course we would, Lord. Well, Jesus says, I'm hungry through that gentleman over there. Give him something to eat. If I was thirsty, Jesus asked, would you give me something to drink? Well, of course we would, Lord. Well, I'm thirsty through that lady over there. Would you give her something to drink? If I was sick, Jesus asked, would you care for me? Well, of course, Lord, we would care for you. Well, I'm sick through that lady in the back. Would you care for her? To be kind to those who are in need, especially fellow Christians, is to be kind to God. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And put that way, we ought to be rushing around looking for people to help, especially brothers and sisters. 
Kindness speaks of seeking to be useful. Kindness pleases God. And kindness characterizes great men and women of God. The Bible is filled with examples of godly men and women who are characterized by kindness. One of the most beautiful examples was that of Ruth. Ruth was an example of kindness when she returned to Israel with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Returning to Israel with Naomi diminished her prospects of finding a husband and a comfortable life. But she did it anyway. And she did it because she was kind and wanted to help her mother-in-law. Not only was Ruth an example of kindness, Boaz was an example of kindness because when Ruth came to glean in his fields, he told his servants to be kind to Ruth and help her. Luke chapter 2. Boaz gave orders to his men. Even if Ruth gathers among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. Rather, pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. I always loved that. He went out of his way. He didn't really know her, but he was just a kind man and a world full of not such kind people. Isn't that nice? Both Ruth and Boaz were kind to others. Ruth was kind to Naomi and Boaz was kind to Ruth. And in their kindness, they were lending to God. They were lending to the Lord. Now, a moment ago, we read in Proverbs 19 that he who is kind to the poor lends to God, and he will reward him for what he has done. This means that when Ruth and Boaz were being kind, they were lending to the Lord, and now both Ruth and Boaz are enjoying the rewards of that lending in glory. And part of that reward is being given the honor of being grandparents to both King David and King Jesus. And I don't know what you think about that as an honor, folks. It doesn't get any better than that. A grandparent of Jesus? Please let me lend some more. Incredible. Ruth was a beautiful example of kindness. Boaz was a beautiful example of kindness. And King David was an example of kindness, especially in the way he treated the families of King Saul and his son Jonathan after Saul and Jonathan were killed and David became king of Israel. 2 Samuel. David asked, Is there anyone still in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness? He's looking for ways to be kind. Notice. He didn't stumble across and say, oh, well, I feel a little sorry for this individual. No. How can I be kind? To a man who was his enemy. Jonathan wasn't, but Saul was. David asked, is there anyone still in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Ziba, a servant of Saul's household, answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in both feet. So David had him brought. And when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, don't be afraid, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. I love that. These are just a few of the many acts of kindness that are seen among the great men and women of the Bible. Great men and women clothe themselves in kindness. I would argue that if you are to be great, you must. And if you don't clothe yourselves in kindness, you're just not. You're not great. Great men and women are constantly on the lookout for opportunities to be kind. Great men and women do what Jesus has urged us all to do. When brothers and sisters are hungry, feed them. When they're thirsty, give them something to drink. When they're ill, care for them. And when they're in prison, visit them. That's important to note. 
that these are not the only ways in which we can be kind. There's one type of kindness that may surprise you. And that type of kindness is violent kindness. Kindness is sometimes violent. And I mention this because most of us have a very narrow view of kindness. Most of us limit our kindness to giving food and clothing and shelter and medical care to the needy. And these are indeed ways of being kind. But kindness is not limited to food, clothing, shelter, and medical care. Kindness can sometimes be violent. Violent kindness is a type of kindness the scene that was seen among many of the great men and women in the Bible. For example, Abraham was being kind to his nephew Lot when he put together an army to rescue Lot from the kings of Mesopotamia who had captured Lot and his family. In fact, God was so pleased with Abraham's violent kindness in helping Lot that he gave Abraham a special blessing through Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God who lived in Salem. And then there was Moses was being kind to the daughters of the priests of Midian when he drove away the shepherds who were giving them a hard time at a watering hole. Samson and the other judges were being kind to the Israelites when they attacked those nations that were persecuting Israel. These and many other examples of kindness, that are uh, violent kindness, fill the Scriptures. But the greatest single act of violent kindness was seen when God the Father poured out his wrath on Jesus Christ while Jesus was hanging on Calvary's cross. When God the Father poured out his wrath on Jesus, he was being incredibly violent. But he was also being incredibly kind to us. And we could go on and on, but you get the idea. Kindness seeks to be helpful to those in need. Sometimes those in need require nonviolent kindness. Sometimes those in need require violent kindness. Sometimes we feed and clothe and shelter the needy. Sometimes we must attack those who are harming the needy. If, for example, we suddenly saw a man attacking a woman in our parking lot, she would clearly need our help. And kindness would demand that we go to her aid, even if it meant being violent toward her attacker. A kindness that is unwilling to be violent and in the process risk harm is a shallow kindness. Biblical kindness demands both generosity and courage. Now before... Leaving this subject is necessary to deal with those who object to the idea that God expects Christians to be confrontational and even violent. This invariably comes up. Usually people say, wait a minute, the Lord Jesus Christ said to the Sermon on the Mount that if, we, if someone strikes us on the right cheek, we should turn to him also the left. Understand this, my friend. Violent kindness is not odds with the Sermon on the Mount and its command to turn the other cheek. The problem with those who cite this passage from the Sermon on the Mount as being a prohibition against violence is the problem is that it has nothing to do with violence or nonviolence. The Lord's command to turn the other cheek was a command that prohibited vengeance and retaliation. And Jesus, what Jesus was getting at was this. We should not seek vengeance and retaliation against those who do us wrong. To slap a man was considered a major insult a major insult in the first century. And what Jesus was saying in this passage was that when we are insulted, we are not to retaliate against those who insult us. Keep this in mind. The Sermon on the Mount was a sermon on the Old Testament law. And since Jesus often ordered violence and even rewarded violence in the Old Testament, he would not in this sermon prohibit violence. And he didn't. He did, however, prohibit seeking vengeance against those who insult us or treat us badly. There are people in this world who need our help. 
Some need food, clothing, and shelter. And some need protection against those who would do them harm. And the genuinely kind person manages both. Now, my fifth point in this five-point message, it's not very bad baptistic, is it? I need three to be baptistic. I, I was a Baptist pastor, so I can fa- have fun with Baptists. My fifth point is this. Kindness is really dependent upon the one showing kindness. It's dependent upon the one showing kindness. Kindness is not dependent upon the one receiving that kindness. Biblical kindness springs from the character of godly men and women who are being kind. Now, we noted a moment ago that when we are being kind to others, we are imitating God because God is kind to us. As God, God's kindness to us is not dependent upon the worthiness of the ones being helped. This is the key. It's not dependent upon the worthiness of those being helped. It's dependent upon God's character because God's character at its core is a character of kindness. So his kindness is not because we're worthy. It's because of who he is. He is by nature kind. Kindness from God is totally dependent on God, not upon us being deserving, which is a good thing. Otherwise, we would all be in deep, deep trouble because none of us deserves God's kindness. Now, the road called deserve, the road called deserve is a road you don't ever want to get on. And you don't ever want to get on that road called deserve because the road called deserves ends in a place called hell. Only one place for the road called deserve. That's hell. And it ends there because hell is what we all deserve. Please, God, don't ever give me what I deserve. I deserve this. I listen to people on TV and other times talking about we deserve this, we deserve this, and these commercials, I deserve the best. I think Fools all. Please, Lord, don't ever give me what I deserve because hell is what I deserve. Fortunately, God is kind and is willing to skip giving me what I deserve. And instead, he gives me what I don't deserve through Jesus Christ. Not only is God kind to us providing by providing salvation, for us through Jesus Christ. He is kind to us even while we are still here on earth. For example, much of the Western world has little or no use for God, and it's getting worse. So do we deserve God's kindness? Of course not. Yet God is incredibly kind to us. He has given us the sun. He gives us water. He gives fertile fields on which to grow crops. He has blessed us with technological advances and this generation that have given us a prosperity beyond anything in the history of the world. And he has done all of this in spite of the fact that most of the world despises him. Why? Why is he so good to us even though we have no use for him? He is good to us because his kindness is not dependent upon us. His kindness is only dependent upon himself. He is at his very core, kind. When we began this series of messages on love, I pointed out that God's love and the love he wants us to imitate is a love that is dependent upon the one doing the loving and not upon the one being loved. All of which means that our kindness to others must be dependent upon ourselves not the ones we're being kind to. Don't look and say, you don't deserve it, you don't deserve it, you don't deserve it, therefore, I'm not going to be kind to you. If you're operating on that realm, you're not operating in God's realm, I promise you. You're kind because they need your kindness. Love demands that we be kind, and that kindness is really up to us. And when you consider God's great kindness to us, it really should not be that difficult to obey God's command to go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. That's a command. It's one we really ought to obey. 
the world may or may not appreciate it. That's not the issue. You want to imitate God or not? How would you like to lend something to God? <laughs> I, I think that's the neatest thing going. I can lend to God. You can. But you've got to be kind to do it. It's a good thing to do. Father, we love you. Thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to lend to you. I pray that we will be a congregation that will do just that. I pray that we'll be loving, kind, generous men and women and in doing so reflect you in a world that has no use for you. You're altogether wonderful and we love you and we worship you and I pray that we can live lives pleasing to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray.